This stretch of Adelaide's River Torrens is the site of a new development, providing accommodation for thousands of tiny little residents. These hotels may be multi-level, but they don't take up much space because the clientele only need a few millimetres each. This is a native bee hotel, or a bee b and &B, designed to showcase the habitat of these amazing creatures. Last year, along with lots of volunteers, I helped install these bee hotels along the river. Several councils collaborated on the project to increase the area's biodiversity and encourage the native bees to return. Katja Hogendorn is a native bee guru. She has published extensively on how native bees live, eat, nest and pollinate. Native bees are very important. They are bioindicators of the health of the environment, the, themselves and the plants around us. When we protect them, we do a lot more. We protect the whole environment. This creates habitat for bees to nest in. And this is so the place where they produce their offspring. We've got bamboo. That bamboo has a closed back and is hollowed out. There's lots of resin bees having used that in this hotel. There are wood blocks with holes of different sizes and they represent the borer holes that you might find in dead wood in your garden. And the third habitat is clay and that represents nests in the soil. Bees will use it in the hotel, but more than 50% of our bees nest in the soil. So for home gardeners, the take home message is not to mulch your whole garden, leave a bit of bare exposed soil just for native bees. Uh, <laughs> we do need to leave some open spaces. It's not only lawn, plants and mulch because most of our native bees wouldn't find a place to nest. In this situation here, there would already be lots of native bees and lots of habitat. So what's the purpose of this actual structure? This is really to showcase that native bees are out there because people passing here can see that nests are being filled up and if they're lucky, they can see bees active. Normally you wouldn't see them, they're shy, they're tiny, they're not social, so they're spread out in the landscape. And so it makes people aware of bees. Can you see any of the bees in here? Yeah, they live in the homes, don't they? It's beautiful along here. We get to listen to the kookaburras. We see the koalas. We've got ducks on the water. We actually watch the native beehive being created and it's been lovely to see the bees coming into it. Um, I bring my grandson down regularly and we've watched all the different stones and pieces of wood that have gone in there. We saw some information about it after it had been launched and, and the explanation for it. And it's been really great to see it come along and, and the bees move in. And I think we're all getting more aware of how important the bees are particularly the native ones. Yeah. And they go find the flowers, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, and then they bring the pollen back. Pollen. Pollen, yeah. Now, all bees are important pollinators, aren't they? Yes, all bees are important pollinators. Honeybees are our most important crop pollinators, but there are also native bees that pollinate plants, and they pollinate a number of plants that honeybees cannot pollinate, such as the tomato. Tomatoes require a buzz pollinator and they land on the flower and they say Bleep! and that makes the pollen land. Through that pollination we get more seeds and we get a heavier, larger and more tasty tomato. What else can home gardeners do to support native bees? The most important thing they need to realise is that there is no bee hotel without a restaurant. Uh, bees need food to provision their offspring in the bee hotel. So, plant bee food. What would the best place to start be if you're looking to put in plants specifically for bees? Local native plants are the best because that is what our bees are adapted to. A eucalypt tree is a resource that hasn't got its equal, but not everybody can have a eucalypt in the garden. And a good alternative is the lily pilly. You can even have it in a pot and it provides similar resources. And why is the colour important? Many flowers are, have evolved colours to attract their pollinators. And blue and yellow, and for a large part also white flowers, are very attractive to bees. The best thing to do is go to your local native nursery and ask them what are good bee plants, because they generally know. Mm. 
native bees are so interesting. Most people think of bees as social with the queen and workers. Mm -hmm. Most of them are solitary. They are stunningly beautiful. I mean, imagine every color in the world and they have it. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> The more we learn about native bees, the clearer we see that it's worthwhile making a few small changes to the way we garden in order to protect one of our biggest assets. 